Bringing someone, let's say I'm bringing my girlfriend, and they'll go like, yeah, beep, beep, yeah, you're bringing your girlfriend, she's great, we're gonna have a lovely little chat. Beep, beep, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, she'll pick up, she'll pick up. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep, she's probably in the shower. Beep, beep. I don't think she's gonna answer. <laughs> What's the point of her? I'm gonna switch myself up forever. And that's how I got here today. Uh, no, I do have a girlfriend. It's great. It's great having a girlfriend. Isn't it great having a girlfriend? Men with girlfriends in the room. Who's in love? Yay. Not enough people. Who's in love? Uh, it's great being in love, but it takes over your mind, doesn't it? Because you sort of, you start thinking, you go, I love this person. She's perfect for me. I want to get married to her. I want to grow old with her. I want to have children with her. I want to die with her. Not with her. <laughs> Oh, but, but those things, but you just think those small things, you know, I want to watch Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway with her. No one wants to do that, but in my head I do! And then, but then your head starts thinking, like, the bad things, like, what if, what if she breaks up with me? What if I break up with her? What if one day I wake up and the passion's just gone, I just look around and think, she cheats on me, what if I suddenly get drunk and I cheat on her? I'd never forgive myself. And it breaks your heart on the inside, doesn't it? And then what you realise is, I've been staring at someone on a bus for the past five minutes. <laughs> and they've noticed. <laughs> and they've moved. <laughs> but no, um, having a girlfriend's great, but there's those kind of girlfriendy boy company stories, like, like the first kiss. I remember my first kiss, but there's always that Dickhead couple, isn't it? They have the perfect first kiss. Oh my god, it was perfect! James and I were in Paris, underneath the Eiffel Tower. I looked into his eyes. He looked deep into mine. And as we closed our eyes and moved our lips closer, and as our lips touched, fireworks went off, even though it was only two in the afternoon, and a violinist started singing. <laughs> I can't go, oh my god, it was perfect, we were in jesters. <laughs> Out of our minds. I looked into her eyes, I think there were two of her at the time. <laughs> she might have been looking at me, and I downed my Jaeger bomb and thought, fuck it, and leaned in. As that beautiful ballad reigned over the speakers, my anaconda don't, my anaconda don't, my anaconda. Don't want none, unless you've got buns. <laughs> but, uh, you know, finally tonight I'm going to sort of talk about train heroes. Now, I travel up and down, up and down sort of where I live and where I go to university, and so I'm on trains a lot, and I, I find these people, I call them train heroes. They're the people that make your journey better. So there's train hero number one, I'm waiting for a tube train. I see a piece of graffiti, and that piece of graffiti just makes me smile because it just right, it just says, "I don't really care about apathy." <laughs> Underneath, someone else is going, "Who keeps writing these inane comments?" And then, train around to, I get onto the tube train. I then hear over the town like, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've all got that Friday feeling. We are being held up by a funky red signal at the moment. But as soon as it turns to that sweet, sweet green, we'll be getting you on your way. Train hero number three, and this is my favourite train hero, and I'm going to leave you with this train hero. I'm on the way back to where I go to university in Bath. I am... Um, the tube, tra the tube train I get, the circle line, isn't working, so I'm like worried because I'm shit at public transport. So I go up to the nearest man, hide this jacket, looks like he knows what he's doing, and I say, Excuse me, mate, what's the best way to get to Paddington? And he just looks at me, dead in the eyes, and he just says, Well, probably his marmalade sandwiches. <laughs> you see, Paddington is a bear. <laughs> Okay, and that bear, it's also a station, and that bear is fond of marmalade sandwiches. There we go, I've explained it for you, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Stephen Durrell. You've been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. Good